Today we go over the PL stem. What is PL? PL is the tense that is intense. So when you see a PL verb, it intensifies that which we know from the CAL stem. CAL is our baseline. PL raises it a notch. Look at CAL Shavar to smash. Look at the PL Shaver to shatter. It takes smash, intensifies it, shatter. That's the PL. PL can also, this is the factative usage, take a, an intransitive verb and make it transitive. So to be transitive means to take a direct object. To be intransitive means it cannot take a direct object. The verb to be is intransitive, but hit is transitive. I hit the ball. What the PL does is it takes a verb that is intransitive and can make it transitive. Look at Cal, Kadash, to be holy. This is intransitive, but you make it PL, Kadash. Now it becomes transitive to sanctify or to make holy. Now in the PL, there are certain denominatives. Hey, this sounds familiar, kind of like nominative. Does that sound like a noun to you? That's right. The PL will take a noun and turn it into a verb. Look at davar. This is the noun word, PL, deber, to speak. Now we see a relationship between word and speaking. This is the denominative use of the PL. And there's one final category of the PL, and that's iterative. And this is repetitive action. So if halak in Cal is to walk, halik in PL means to walk around. Not to walk around like this, but you're walking around. You're not really stopping, you're walking. So the iterative occurs with uh, verbs that show projection, effort, or physical movement. Now, let's compare cal with pl, and we'll start with the perfect. Katal versus katel. Katla versus kitla. Katalta versus katalta. Katalt versus katalt. Katalti versus katalti. Katlu versus kitlu. Kitaltem versus kitalten. Kitalten versus kitalten. Katalnu versus Katalnu. The difference is in the Hiric plus the Dagesh. Now, much like Nifal, which had the diagnostic markers kind of built into the name, so is the PL. The difference here being we have the Hiric in the perfect plus a Tsere as our second vowel. In this case, it's our stem vowel. But of course, we have a dogish in our second consonant. So really, when you look at the paradigm, you'll notice the sere is not consistent. So it's helpful to know that that's why we're dealing with PL. But when we're looking at diagnostic markers, it's not consistent. So we're really looking at that first heric plus a dogish. Otherwise, it looks identical to the cow. Now, with the cal versus pl here, this is an intensifying version. So, katal meaning to kill, katel meaning slaughter. In the imperfect, we have the opposite effect. While we moved from a comets to a hiric, now we're moving from hiric to shava. In the imperfect, we still have a dogesh, 
in the second stem consonant. But more consistently, now we see a tsere as our second vowel of the stem, our stem vowel. So let's compare cal with the pl in the imperfect. Yiktol versus yikatel. Tiktol versus tikatel. Tiktol versus tikatel. Tiktali versus tikatli. Ektol versus akatel. Yiktalu versus yikatlu. Tiktolna versus tikatelna. Tiktalu versus tikatlu. Tiktolna versus tikatelna. Niktol versus nikatel. Now, another diagnostic marker in the imperfect here for the PL is that the first stem vowel consonant changes to pathak. So we have the shava under our prefix. We have a pathak under our first consonant of the stem, and we have a sere under the second consonant of the stem. And our second consonant of the stem has the dogesh. Now, to form our imperative and our infinitive construct and our infinitive absolute, remember the basics. Just as we saw in the cal, the pl does the same. It takes the second masculine singular in the imperfect, pl imperfect. It drops the prefix. And what we're left with is the foundation for everything else in the imperative, in the infinitive construct, and the infinitive absolute. So the imperative, katel, katli, katlu, katelna. The infinitive construct, katel. Now, the PL participle simply prefixes mem. You can compare it with the cal. Kotel versus mikatel. Koteleth versus mikateleth. Kotlim versus mikatlim. Kotloth versus mikatloth. So the diagnostic marker of the PL participle is the mem prefix with a shava. The first stem vowel is a pathak, and we have a dagesh, with second stem vowel being tsere. I keep saying stem vowel. That's true for the tsere, but for the rest it's the root consonant position. First root consonant, second root consonant. Bear in mind, the dogish forte is not always there. An example, hamda bear. This is the definite article plus the PL participle masculine singular. It's lacking one of the dogeshes. This is the dogesh from the definite article. It drops because of the presence of the mem prefix. But you know it doesn't look like the cal. Something's different, so you should be able to figure it out. And then we come to weak verbs. Weak verbs maintain the same diagnostic markers that we saw with our strong verbs, except for second gutturals. So looking at third hey, third ion, you can see not a lot changes. There's no sere, but we still have our hirik and our dagesh. In the perfect, shalach, shilcha, shalachta, shalach, shalachti, shilchu, shalachtem, shalachten, 
Shalachnu. In the imperfect, we see our prefix Shava. And then we have Pathak. And we have Dagesh. Yishalach. Tishalach. Tishalach. Tishalchi. Ashalach. Yishalchu. Tishalachna. Tishalchu. Tishalachna. Tishalach. In the imperative, following the same rules. Shalach. Shalchi. Shalchu. Shalachna. Infinitive construct and infinitive absolute following the same rules. Ex with one exception. So the infinitive construct is shalach. The infinitive absolute is shaleach. And the participle, mishaleach. Mishalacha. Mishalchim. Michel Choth. We see the same behaviors in the third Aleph. Mitze, Mitza, Mitzetha, Mitzeth, Mitzethi, Mitzu, Mitzethem, Mitzethen, Mitzenu, Yematze, Timatze, Timatze, Timatsi Amatse Yimatsu Timatsena Timatsu Timatsena Nimatse In the imperative Matse Matsi Matsu Matsena Infinitive construct Matse. The infinitive absolute is a little different. Matso. And the participle. Mimatse. Mimatseith. Mimatsim. Mimatsoth. Third hey follows the same diagnostic markers. Uh, however, sometimes we'll see a comet instead of. Serde Gila Gilta Gilitha Gilith Gilithi Gilu Gilithem Gilithen Gilinu In the imperfect Gigale Tegale, Tegale, Tegali, Agale, Yegalu, Tegalena, Tegalu, Tegalena, Negale. In the imperative, Gale, Gali, Galu, Galena. Infinitive construct, galoth. Infinitive absolute, gale. And the participle, megale. Megala, megalim, megaloth. Geminate verbs follow the same diagnostic markers. Hillel, hilla, hilalta. Hilalt, Hilalti, Hilu, Hilaltem, Hilalten, Hilalnu. The imperfect, Yahalel, Tehalel, Tehalel, Tehali, Ahalel, Yahalu, Tehalelna, Tehalu. Tehalelna, Nehalel. In the imperative, Halel, Hali, Halu, Halelna, 
the infinitive construct and the infinitive absolute match Hallel and the, the participle Mihalel, Mihalelet, Mihalim, Mihalot. And then we come to the second gutturals. The second gutturals are a problem because there's no dagesh forte. Remember, gutturals can't take a dagesh. So there's two solutions to this. The first solution is virtual doubling. So virtual doubling is a fancy word for saying nothing changes. There's no dagesh. The other solution is compensatory lengthening, or what we would call oblaut. And this is where the vowel does change. The preceding vowel lengthens. So in our case, hirik to tsere. And there are some verbs that will do both. Virtual doubling and compensatory lengthening. So, an example of a second guttural with virtual doubling is nacham. So in the perfect, we have nacham, nachama, nachamta, nachamta, nachamti, nachamu, nachamu, nachamtem, nachamtem, nachamnu. In the imperfect, Vinachem, Tinachem, Tinachem, Tinachami, Anachem, Yinachamu, Tinachemna, Tinachamu, Tinachemna, Ninachem. The imperative. Nachem, Nachami, Nachamu, Nachemna. In the infinitive construct, Nachem, the infinitive absolute matches, and the participle, Minachem, Minachemeth, Minachamim, Minachamoth. So what we're seeing with the second guttural here is virtual doubling, meaning nothing changes. There's no dagesh, and there's no changes to our vowels. Now let's look at barach. This is one for compensatory lengthening. Berech, bercha, berachta, beracht, berachti, berchu, Berachtem, berachten, berachnu. In the imperfect, yvarech, tivarech, tivarech, tivarchi, avarech, yvarku, tivarech, tivarechna. Tvarchu, tvarechna, tvarech. Imperative, barech, barchi, barchu, barechna. The infinitive construct and absolute match, barech, and our participle, me barech, me barecheth, me barchim. So here we see compensatory lengthening where our hiric becomes a tsere. Or in the imperfect, our pathak becomes a comet. Now there are many other stems. Uh, one such stem is the polel. You don't need to memorize these, just know that it is there. And just as the name would suggest in the perfect, we're going to see some sort of O-class vowel plus an E-class vowel. And that's what we see. Romem, Roma, Romamta, Romamt, Romamti, Romu, Romamtem, Romamten, Romamnu. 
So generally speaking, everything you've learned about PL applies to Polel. It's just another conjugation. But functionally, it's it's akin to the PL. There is something of a conjunction. It's called the conjunctive Dagesh Forte. When we have the Makef, words are joined together. And sometimes what will happen is the second word, the word that's being joined to the first word, will receive a Dagesh Forte in the initial consonant. This is in order to smooth out pronunciation. This will typically occur when the first word ends in segol hey or comets hey. So you have to have a first word with segol hey or comets hey, then the makef, and then another word. Vizay shemo, l'chana. And that's it for today. We will see you next week for the puwal, the passive counterpart to the PL. We'll see you then.